It was Calvary Chapel Chaos in Cary, North Carolina on Sunday, September 22nd. It was supposed to be Pastor Rodney Finch resigning his position for multiple reasons, which we'll get to here in a minute, but he returned. That's right, Rodney Finch, who back around the end of July into early August, a bunch of stuff came out about some nefarious things that he was up to, which then led to his supposed resignation from Calvary Chapel. The church had been losing members, it had been losing money, and he thought the best thing to do in order for the church to move forward would be for him to step down. Uh, this was a welcome change by many who were tired of Finch's antics over the years, especially with the stunt that he pulled back in July. But there he was, took the stage, the microphone, led the service on Sunday, September 22nd, and he's now back. But why is Rodney Finch back? What happened in order to cause him to walk back this resignation? There was apparently Quite a bit of a tussle between Finch and other assistant pastors. A power struggle, if you will. This is what happens when you have the leader of a church that's caught up in all this drama. You can't really have the Holy Spirit come in there. It's very hard for the Lord to come in when you have these wolves that are running around. And one here in Finch that just couldn't stay away. But we're going to get into it because there was also a leaked audio recording of a church meeting that took place after service. We're going to get into that too. Before we do any of that, though, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story of how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see. I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. If you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation, we have multiple ways you can do that. One easy way, just hit the super thanks button on the YT video here. You can also become a monthly contributor for as little as five bucks a month. Would love for you to do that at patreon.com slash news. That link in the description. Or you guys can help us out on our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link in the description of this video as well. We created the GoFundMe to help out myself and my wife with our stacking medical bills and other bills piling up on us right now as we're just trying to keep the lights on. My wife had suffered a stroke. She's only 39 years old. She suffered a stroke back in August. In addition to that, she was diagnosed with a clotting disorder that's now going to leave her on blood thinners for the rest of her life. She suffered multiple allergic reactions and side effects to antibiotics that caused a bunch more problems. Uh, just a very difficult time that it's been for us. She's uh, still recovering from all of this right now. She's going to be out of work for a while. Uh, so if you guys feel led to help us out, think about donating, or may, you know, maybe you just appreciate this ministry and what I do, and you want to help out because of that. Whatever the case, we appreciate whatever you can give to us. And also, uh, if you can't donate, that's okay. If you don't have the means, you can help us out by simply hitting the like button on these videos and sharing them around. When you do that, you help to get these videos out there more in the recommended sections of the alg algorithm, get more eyes on them. So that helps us out tremendously as well. Uh, keep us, you know, continue to keep us in your prayers. We definitely need that right now at this time. So thank you again. But let's get into it. Rodney Finch takes the pulpit back on Sunday, September 22nd. Let me give you a little bit of a rundown here on the history of Finch and Calvary Chapel Cary. Because Finch has been uh, facing allegations for quite some time. Multiple different things here. Bullying, that's one. As it comes to staff, as it comes to congregants. Uh, also, mistreatments, if you know what I mean, of his own son, which has, his son has spoke about before as well. Uh, in addition to Rodney Finch's, uh, you know, addiction to various substances. And we'll, we'll leave it at that. But then came the events that took place in July when Rodney Finch had listed Calvary Chapel Cary for sale and seemingly didn't tell anybody about it, didn't inform the church about it, just happened to list the building for sale right there. Because again, you know, this is a church that has been losing members now for quite some time. People are getting out of there. They wanted nothing to do with Rodney Finch in the way that he was 
leading the church. Now, once people started finding out, because it was discovered by somebody that they found the church listed for sale, and they're like, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? Finch then quietly uh, took the church off the market to try and kind of hide this and cover this up, but then was forced to admit it during uh, a service not long after that, where he apologized to the church for the way that he handled it, uh, said that that was not right, that wasn't the right thing to do, and he was going to resign, you know, again, in order for the church to be able to move forward. Now, a lot of people were very happy about this. When I talked about the story at the time, and I had people in the comment section that were saying, you know, thank God Rodney's leaving. They talked about, you know, how bad this guy really is and everything. And then you had assistant pastor Ralph Storrs had taken the pulpit. This was after Rodney Finch had announced he was resigning. And he said that the church was basically going to be you know, split up between the other leaders. And, you know, if anybody had any questions, they could they could come to them. But now everything has changed. Now, when Finch took the pulpit back, he, you know, he gets up there, he tries to do his best impression from Independence Day by saying, I'm back. Now, this got applause, of course, from the people that were there in attendance and laughter. And he said, well, I was going to stay away, but you know what? There was a breakdown of communication between myself and other pastors here on board. Now, he was referencing Scott Burrell and Ralph Storrs, where apparently there was a meeting that took place between the three. And according to Finch, there was a breakdown in communication as far as his retirement package and that they were trying to not give him his fair amount of money for his retirement. Now, Finch claims that the two assistant pastors were you know, trying to get Finch to sign over basically his entire rights to the church over to them in exchange for his full retirement package and, and other, you know, breakdowns of that as far as the total amount of what that would be. We don't know that. Uh, various outlets have been requesting comment to see what that is. And Finch basically said that that's not going to go down. But that's not the that's not the only thing. Finch also claimed that the pastors had accused him of creating an LLC as a way to defraud the church of money from the impending sale, which this is something that Finch also denied and said this was just simply a clerical error, uh, which a representative did confirm was the case. But as far as the money goes, the retirement package, Finch says that that was his retirement money He's not going to just let it slip away from him. And so he said, you know what? I can't allow this to take place. I'm taking control of my church. And he even said that the Lord had given him a dream where he told him that he needed to come back to the church. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I believe that or not. So Finch is back. And here's something else to know. That the church's website, they previously had two services on Sundays. It now says there will only be one service going forward. And also, the midweek services have been postponed for further notice. In addition to that, all staff has now been removed. The staff page for the church's website has been completely scrubbed. Does not list any staff whatsoever. Now, I mentioned here at the top of this video that there was a leaked recording of the church meeting that took place after the service. I'm going to link that audio for you in the description of this video if you would like to go and listen to it. It's courtesy of the Roy's Report, who obtained a copy of not just the service that day, but also the meeting that took place afterwards, where Finch had elaborated a little bit more on why he was coming back, where he says that, you know what, he'll, he'll stay as long as the Lord tells him to stay. He ain't retiring just yet. Now, the other thing that Finch announced was that he has an entirely new church board now. So, uh, it seems here that, you know, the relationship between himself, Stores, and Burrell is done uh, based off the argument that ensued. In fact, Finch even said that after he took the pulpit back, he said that Stores and Burrell had gone out into the, you know, the, the foyer area, the lobby. You know, they were, they were arguing. There was, you know, a, a fight that ensued. He said that people were crying during the service. I mean, it was, again, just chaos. He said he's never seen anything like it before. Yeah, I'm sure people are hurt by what's going on. But the common denominator here is Finch. He stepped away. 
Then he decided to come back and said, no, I want my money. Speaking of that, he also told the church that he has now put the church back up for sale again. But I guess he, he's telling them this time, so I guess that's okay. And he informed the congregation that the church's expenses are at about $95,000 a month. So he told people, you know, you know, give to the church. We could really use the help right now. You know, if you know, if you can, please give. We'd appreciate it. Who's going to give into this church? That, that's my question. With everything that Finch has done, you know, running the church into the ground. I mean, really, you know, the fall of the church is his fault. Everything that he has done, everything that he has been, you know, credibly accused of, the church is falling apart because of him. And he's telling these people, you know, your hard-earned money, please give it to us to keep Calvary Chapel Carry going. It's just ridiculous. Now, will people do it? Of course they will. Because for so many people, they worship pastors, right? They, don't, they bury their heads in the sand and they just like to pretend that none of this stuff actually happens. Every pastor is good because it, they have pastor in front of the name. We can trust them, right? I, I know that seems crazy, but that's the way that many people think. And if you dare to call out evil and expose it, they just call you a gossiper and everything else like that. Because again, that's just what they're trained to do. That's how they're trained to react. Their pastors can misinterpret scripture, give them the interpretation that they want them to believe because they don't read the Bible for themselves. No, they, I mean, they check the box of going to church on Sunday. That makes them a good Christian. You didn't know? <laughs> Come on. We talk about this all the time. So with Finch returning now, I want to hear from you guys on this, you know, especially if you were a member of Calvary Chapel Cary or a former member. What do you think about this? What do you think about this breakdown in communication? You know, this power struggle. Again, all of this just hurts. I mean, it, again, it, it hurts the church, but but the sins of this guy have already been exposed. And so this is just really the aftermath of that. And it's just, it, it just continues to get worse. Uh, what a mess. I mean, we, we talked about Calvary Chapel churches over the years and just all the drama that's in them with, you know, these types of individuals like Finch. It's just, the Lord is continuing to expose. That's all I can really tell you. Well, but again... Uh, I want to hear from you guys on this. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Don't forget again as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help out, remember you can do that through the super thanks button on the YT video. You can become a monthly contributor by joining the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Or again, you can help us out on our GoFundMe. That link in the description of this video as well. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves who occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the Word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask Him to forgive you, He'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says He doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.